Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Aviation Design Diamond Build Series. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all the views and the support on the, uh, the video series. If this is your first time finding my channel, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Um, give the video a thumbs up. And uh, we've got something a little bit special in this uh, video for you. We'll get to that in a second. All right, guys, let's give something away. Um, obviously, I want to promote the channel. Uh, we've got a bunch of great channel supporters, and one of those channel supporters is Sky Candy Landing Lights. All right, guys, so I want to give a set of these one-inch landing lights away. Um, along with the digital switch that comes with it. These are the, uh, the units that I installed on my Carf Tutor. A bunch of you regular viewers have seen these lights before um, if you watch my Tutor video. And uh, I'd love to give a set of these away because they are amazing, amazing lights. All right, guys, so here's how we're going to give these lights away. Number one, the first criteria, this video, this specific video, needs to get 1,000 thumbs ups, 1,000 thumbs ups, okay, so 1,000 likes. So every single viewer, hit that thumbs up button down below. If this video gets 1,000 thumbs up, we're gonna give these lights away. This is a $100 value for this combo right here, $100 US, so a Canadian, that's like a million dollars. It's not, it's like $130, but uh, we're gonna give these things away if we get 1,000 thumbs ups on the video. The second thing, when you do give it a thumbs up, down below in the comment section, write the word done. If you have a bunch of other comments, that's totally fine, include it afterwards, but write the word done. Now we are going to pick, when we get a thousand thumbs up, we're gonna pick from all the comments down below in this video, and we're gonna give this away randomly to one of you guys who gave the video a thumbs up and also commented down below. So let's help things out, guys. Let's give away this light set and uh, thumbs up, comment done. So if you guys are looking for uh, Sky Candy Lights, you can find Sal on Facebook. Um, just search Sky Candy Lights. Uh, you can also go to their website, which is skycandylandinglights.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. Check them out. All right, guys, so yesterday, and in, in the previous video was yesterday, we finished all of the um, surface points, the, uh, the control horns on the surfaces. So that stuff is all done. Very, very excited about that. Uh, now we've got something else that's very special for you. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at that, and uh, let's see, right? Now. All right, guys, so we had an awesome package show up today, and we also picked up some cool things. So um, let's get to the uh, the not-so-cool things, but I found these wicked little, uh, they're from Dynamite, so they're a Horizon Hobby product, but 4,000 milliamp LiPo batteries, and they're absolutely tiny. So these are what we're going to be powering the uh, the Diamond with, and uh, I was really happy to find these at my local hobby store, and... Uh, picked them up, they were about $65 Canadian, I think, but uh, this will provide ample power for the diamond and uh, they're still fairly light. So that's the first cool thing. And second cool thing is this bag package right here. So you guys probably know what these are, but uh, these are my Revic wing bags for the diamond. So let's, uh, let's open these things up and take a look at them. All right, it was actually really good timing for these to show up. And uh, the reason I say that is because when you start to unpackage a new plane, at least for me, I don't have tons of room in my garage. So, um, you know, finding areas to store all these uh, wings and parts and all that kind of stuff does become a bit of a chore. So having a nice set of wing bags, like the Revic wing bags, makes uh, storing your wings during the build or transporting them absolutely a breeze. So I ordered these a while ago. I knew I wanted the orange diamond and we got 
the orange bag set. All right. These are cool. They're actually, uh, yeah, they look great. I'm always surprised at how heavy their, their, uh, their stuff is. Like when you get this package, it's almost like carrying around a floppy uh, body that's wrapped in plastic. We've got a bit of a grease splooge there from shipping. Oh well, I'm sure it's not going to be the first. Beautiful. Let's just leave this all intact and we'll go through these things um, one by one. Now we've done a, a Revic bag unboxing before when I got my uh, order for the Ultra Flash and the, uh, the Tudor. Um, so it's nothing new for you guys. So typical inside, these are black velvet. My other ones were green velvet. Love that. I think it looks beautiful. And I'm sure they're going to be just a perfect fit for the, uh, the diamond wings. So I won't open the other one, but so we've got uh, the elevator bags. Okay. Those are great. And this is the massive rudder bag. So the cool thing about this is it's got the cutout in it. So it can actually be installed um, with, I think your elevator still on. So you can actually carry that stuff as one big piece. And then if you were to put these things together like that, I think they generally, when these guys do these bags, they all tie up together. So that is beautiful, great quality stuff. Always love Revit quality guys. If you are looking for the best, best uh, bags for your planes, these are definitely the company to go with. Um, I've never been uh, unhappy with the, uh, the Revit material. This stuff is actually a little bit thicker, I think. It's just, a, it's got a bit of a different feel to it than my, uh, my previous bags. I love the feel of this stuff. It's really heavy and really textured. It's really, really nice. So this is cool. This is nose cone bag. This is gonna be used all the time because that nose cone is actually quite delicate and it's a bit of a pain. So let me grab the nose cone and we'll, uh, we'll put it in there. All right, so. I don't know if there's a specific way for this to go in, but oh man, that is great. Oh yeah. Okay, so the nose goes all the way to the end. So I'm actually feeling the end of the nose right there. And we've got a bunch of extra room back here. So you've got about uh, probably five inches to the end of the bag. And which means we can close that thing no problem. Then it's got a carry handle as well too. That is great. Love that. That's so awesome. Uh, wing tube bag. These things aren't attached to the uh, the wing bags just because it's so long. This plane has ridiculous sized um, wing tubes. Okay, and we'll check fit one of these elevators. And like I suspect, they fit beautifully that is cool okay guys so again if you are looking for the absolute best set of wing bags check out Revic um, they make custom wing bags custom fuselage bags airplane covers so many cool things um, yeah they're, they're just great quality stuff I'll link to them down below check out their website um, they've got so many different planes listed on their website. So if you fly a, a plane, if you fly a glider, a gas plane, they probably have a set of wing bags or a set of fuselage, uh, like a fuselage bag that will work for you. So check them out and uh, you, you won't be disappointed at all. All right, guys, one more shot here of the, uh, the Revic bags. Dang, they're bright, hey? 
All right, guys, it's time to get installing the servos. That's going to be the remainder of this video, installing all the servos on the surfaces. Um, so I'm just going to go through the process with you and um, show you how I do one of them. They're all going to be exactly the same, but uh, I'll show you one start to finish and uh, show you some tricks and stuff here that... Uh, that we have. So we've got this servo horn here, which is a plastic one. Now that servo horn is sized exactly correct. So we're at 14 millimeters from center to center, and that's where our servos uh, horns need to be for all the surfaces. So we can use this one as a template when we're drilling these other servos uh, horns. So we've got a bit of a problem with uh, these MPI ones in that they've got a little bit of the angle there um, that's going to interfere with the placement of that hole right there. So what do we need to do? We need to sand this area down and best thing I think to, to do that other than a milling machine or whatever is a nice good quality hand file. Uh, we've got a coarse and a fine side and we just stick this in the vise and just slowly sand it away until we just start to get the red disappearing on the actual arm. So I'll do that and show you guys the results. Okay guys, so there's the result of the sanding. So you can see that we just started to get into the side of the servo horn and it looks like there's a ridge there, but we're not. We have just um, leveled out that, uh, that servo horn. So next thing we need to do is use this as a template to mark our servo horn. So the best thing to do is if you put them together like this and lightly screw it down. Now what you can do is get that servo horn all lined up like that. And then we don't want to drill this by hand because you can get a funny angle on this. You know, if you're using your hand drill and you're at an angle, then your clevis that clamps on here is not going to work right. So all I want to do with this is I want to get it started or just marked out right here. Uh, so I'm just going to use my drill and just mark that out. Or you could scratch it or if you had a thin marker, you could do that. And then I'm actually going to drill it on my drill press. All right guys, so there is the servo horn, 14 millimeters. We have a nice um, hole that's perfectly perpendicular to the actual servo um, arm itself and uh, should work beautiful. So before we do the other servo arms, we know how to do this one. Like most things, I'm going to set up the elevator first, make sure this all works and uh, we'll go from there. Now, one thing we have to do with the servos now to get them set up properly is we are going to have to plug the servos in to the receiver and radio and that kind of stuff just so we can get center on the servos. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you guys some uh, progress here shortly. Okay guys, one of the cool things about uh, JR XBus servos is you can plug these into the XBus port. Um, you can program them and they hold the settings even if you put them in the PWM port. Okay, so you can reverse these servos without reversing your channel, things like that. So um, absolutely awesome. One of the things I love about this is the centering as well too. So you can get these insanely accurate. Um, so what I like to do is use a square and have the servo sitting on there. I've already adjusted this one, but you can see that it is perfectly square along that edge. Actually, we're off just a little bit. Just looking at the light through the screen of my transmitter. And there we go. So that's perfect. Okay, so we've got this um, programmed now. We're going to hit set and everything is saved. And all I'm doing before I install this is just checking the direction of stuff. So when I pull back elevator, it should go towards the surface, which it does. And that means the surface is going to go up and raise the nose up. So, so now what we can do is we can unplug the servo from the XBus output. 
We can plug it into channel three. And everything works like it did before. We'll check the centering just to be sure. And there we go. That is one of the reasons I love JR servos, JR radios, and the XBus system. Absolutely awesome. All right, guys, now that we've got the servo horn installed where we want it to go, we want to Loctite this stuff on. So we're going to Loctite the pinch bolt. So before I do the pinch bolt down, we want to do the capture screw down in order to allow the servo horn to push all the way on. Okay, so we're going to tighten this one down. No, it's not my knuckles cracking, that's just the, the bubble wrap. And then now that that's tightened, we will tighten capture screw and we're all good this is ready to install okay guys couple things with the servo mounts here so um, the holes are funny sized what I mean by that is the uh, the channel here fits the metric three millimeter screw no problem the other one is uh, is tight so what we're gonna do there is that actually works out great because the servo is going to sit something like that, okay? So we're gonna thread this top one with a tap. So we're gonna thread three millimeter holes into there. So we'll be able just to screw the top screw right into the mount. And then we'll use on the bottom one, we'll use a bolt and a nut to hold the bottom one in. So that's gonna work perfect. I'm gonna get these threaded and then we'll get the uh, servo installed. All right guys, it was quite a pain in the butt to get this all lined up, but it's done. Um, so you can see I, th I uh, just screwed right into the threads I made on that side, used a nut on that side, had to use two spacers. Uh, now if I would have put the rubber grommets in there, it probably actually would have lined up quite well but uh, I'm not a fan of using the rubber grommets because it adds flex into the surface and we don't have vibration on jets like in a gas airplane. Um, so our distance here is very, very close. Hopefully I can pick that up. But what I ended up doing was adjusting these arms a whole bunch of times because uh, you can slide them on the rails, right? I ended up adjusting them a whole bunch of times to just get enough clearance there. And it actually still rubs, but I don't think we'll be going that far with uh, with um, servo travel anyways. So, Anyways, guys, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a clevis on this side. Okay, we're going to put a piece of fuel tubing on the clevis so it can uh, stay closed. And these are the same clevises that are used on CARF airplanes, or at least the Alter Flash. Same, exact same clevis. So um, I'll put a piece of fuel tubing on there, and that should work great. And then what I'm going to do is just thread the uh, rod into the clevis. We'll kind of get a rough idea of how much rod length we need. And then once that's all set up, um, we will eventually later on do our hinge points and stuff like that but um, I think I want to get the tail all assembled first so anyways guys that is one of the servos um, all put together I'm going to do exactly the same thing to all the other surfaces and uh, I won't bore you with every other surface because it's going to be exactly the same as this guy all right guys just want to give you an idea exactly the the steps here so what I did was I put some shrink wrap over top of the clevis in this area and uh, shrunk that down. And then I put some red Loctite. Well, once I had the rod length figured out, 
So I did my rough uh, measurements here. This ma is uh, matching rod length. So once I got my rod length down and I had the, uh, the shrink tube on the clevis, then I put a bunch of red Loctite in the clevis on the inside. Uh, cleaned the rod with rubbing alcohol because Loctite doesn't like to work with uh, lubricated uh, parts. So clean that off, threaded the rod in, and within about uh, a minute it was already starting to get solid. And then uh, what I did was install the servo, uh, drilled the holes with a, a little drill bit, threaded those in. No CA installed yet because uh, we're going to be taking these back out. Um, to CA them and, and do some final things here. But um, what that's going to do is that allows me to get this clevis um, set up later on. Okay. The other thing I did is there's a little bit of side to side play here with the servo cover. So what I did, try and capture this for you. So what I did was, of course, there's a little bit of side to side play. I balanced that out with the servo cover. So it doesn't take much movement, like half a millimeter, one millimeter, but I just made it so when you travel one direction and the other direction, we're about the same, and uh, then we're roughly in the center. Now, because there's side-to-side -side play, that doesn't mean that there's there's play in the pivot, because that uh, hole's drilled exactly the right size for the clevis, um, but there's just play side-to-side. -side. That's just the way it is, so. Um, Anyways, so this will not get finished until we have the whole tail section um, set up and ready to install. Then we can do our final adjustment. Because we have the servo centered, we want to get this mechanically centered um, when our, service, our surface can be butted up to the rudder. And then we can uh, mechanically center all that. And then we'll know we'll be starting with even surfaces. Okay, so we're going to leave all this. But it does work, works great. And uh, that's one surface completely done up to where we need it to be. Now we're gonna do the same thing on all the other surfaces. All right guys, working away on the uh, servos for all the surfaces still. Uh, both of the elevators are complete. And I'm just working on the rudder here. Um, just showing you guys, it uh, says make a big cutout. In this area so all I did was just draw it with a sharpie and then just use my uh, my Dremel with this um, carbide bit I, I really like this bit because it's very aggressive and uh, cuts through stuff nice and quick as well so so anyways the rudder is um, almost done so just a couple notes for you regarding these uh, servo uh, plates if you ever do decide to go with an aviation design kit so the uh, the set screw that holds the uh, the vertical arm in it's just a 1.5 uh, millimeter Allen key. So don't over tighten those first of all. And the second thing is when you tighten them, if you put some pressure on them, so naturally what happens? Let's use bent screwdriver for this. So naturally what happens if you don't do anything and hold this, uh, because the set screw is near the back, it'll actually tighten it up and it'll have an angle like this. Okay. Um, so if you put some pressure on the top of the, uh, the servo mount, pushing it back this way, and then slowly tighten that up, what happens is the angles match up and you get a nice even line throughout there. And I learned this because on my first elevator I over tightened it and um, it uh, took a little, quite a bit of work to get it to sit properly. So. Anyways, guys, just a little tidbit for you. If you're ever doing a kit like this, um, these don't need to be super tight. Of course, we put Loctite on that, uh, thread locker on there, and we put thread locker on it on everything else as well. All right, guys, all the surfaces are, or the servos for the surfaces are done. Um, yeah, it was uh, actually quite a process getting everything set up. Uh, a couple little notes here. Uh, the flap surface, um, it's kind of explained in the manual, but not really explained in the manual. So anyways, if you think about the way the flaps work here, so generally if your plane has big flaps, 
you need to maximize the travel of the actual servo itself. So what I mean by that is on this particular servo, if this is the center line of the servo, when the flap is in its neutral position, the, uh, the servo arms like this, and then we get 160 millimeters of movement at the root, uh, which is something like that for full flaps. And uh, for in order for that to happen, the servo arm has to go from here to there. Okay, so if you, when you set up flaps, you gotta think about that because if you set the arm straight up and down, you're not gonna have enough travel. Okay, or mechanically it probably won't work. So there's there's a couple pictures in the manual, but it's really not explained that that well, or it actually doesn't even mention it. So just from experience, this is what you need to do. Now, the way I set this up mechanically so it's perfect, I get this the servo centered, servo arm centered, okay, and then I move it however many splines. So in this case, I moved it one, two splines on the servo. And then the other servo on the other wing for the flap, I did exactly the same thing. So centered, move it back, two splines, okay? So now we know mechanically they're very, very close. And uh, then what we'll do is we haven't set up any of the, uh, the linkages on the wing side. So I like doing that when all the wiring's complete. So um, the wire extensions and stuff haven't been done in here, but now our, our servos are set up. So what we'll do is we'll get the all the wiring done on the plane and then that's kind of the final step for me is getting the surfaces set up uh, once we can actually plug things in so the other thing with that is obviously we have to put some shrink wrap or shrink tube on this side of the clevis we did that on all the insides of the clevis and then I might put a carbon covering over top of the uh, the rods here it's one of those things that's not necessary but uh, it does give a nice look and uh, it also adds some strength to these these threaded rods. I mean, you can take them and bend them quite easily. Not that that's going to happen in this case because all the force is really this way straight down the rod. So I think I'm probably going to leave it. But anyways, that's just something I'm thinking about. Um, but anyways, guys, all the surfaces are done. Last thing with the... Uh, it's probably going to be fairly difficult to see this. But if you look at the bottom of the opening, it's not purple. And the reason for that is I sanded that out. So when the flap is in its full up position, uh, the clevis on the servo gets quite close. Um, it actually was rubbing on the bottom of the, uh, the servo opening. So just simply sanding that down um, added enough clearance where this all just jives well. So right now the, the tip is actually just inside the hole. We're just contacting the lower portion, so mechanically it all, it all should work really nice.